Welcome everybody to week nine of the hot route up here with me as usual, Mr. Ryan. Ryan, how are you doing this evening or this afternoon? I'm doing good. I uh, left uh, work early, come home, do this. Might go golfing this afternoon. It's actually sunny out here, but it's it's like high 40s, low 50s. Still golfing this, so I'm going to try to get out and play one of my final rounds this year. How you doing? It is, uh, it is a lot colder here than that. It also has a um, – being here my whole life and then going to Dallas and then San Antonio kind of spoiled. Like, normally today's temperature wouldn't be as cold to me, but I think because I've been in heat for like five or six years straight without this much cold, it uh, when it gets colder, it, it affects us a lot more. Um, so no golf for me, but pr- plenty busy day. But we fortunately, we get a little more golfing season than you guys do up there. Does your course or wherever you play at, do they – I remember JB would tell me that they would literally like, I didn't even realize this until I started meeting people up in the Northeast that they literally like shut down courses. Like even if you had like a 70 degree day in, in January, the course is shut down from like this point to this point, no matter what. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause the ground would be too frozen. Even if they have like a nice day in between there. So yeah, they'll shut down. And even now, like you can't go out too early in the morning, just too much frost. So they don't, you know, it's just, it's tough to find a time, but today, like, the sun just squeaked out a little bit. I'm going to just try to get it in. I thought I might be done, but I'm going to get one more in. No, I'm excited. We got a, uh, I think on paper, would think tonight's game will be, uh, and I'm changing up the rotation because I got tired of having to rethink myself. Um, I will start dropping this fairly shortly after we record it, let this roll, and then I'll drop coin flip um, either later tonight or Friday morning. Um, so we're Thursday afternoon. This is going to be our set time pretty much to record every week. Uh, looking forward to the tonight's game. I think um, on paper it seems like one of those scrub games, but then in, in sometimes that turns into a fairly good game. We, we have a lot of unknowns. You know, the Mike White experience. Um, is that a one-off, you know, Bengals got laxed? Um, or are, are they going to be competitive? Colts, you would have thought would be writing off their season after the, the heartbreaking loss to Titans, but then Henry gets hurt. So I think they have some kind of motivation to say, if we we win a lot, you know, who knows what the Titans are going to do without Henry. Henry's a massive piece to that offense. Um, they have a tough game against the Rams on Sunday. So looking forward to tonight. We got another college football game tonight. Tomorrow, college football. We got NASCAR trucks. Final weekend of NASCAR. We got NASCAR trucks. NASCAR Xfinity on Saturday, then the final race of the season on Sunday. Massive UFC card on Saturday. Um, Going to try to do a little repeat of the college football smash from last weekend. Um, so looking forward to a big weekend, big week, good, good time to join. If you want to join, use the code HOT, get 20% off. Includes a free seven-day trial, risk-free. Uh, you don't like us within seven days, cancel, you never get charged. Rate and review us on iTunes. Uh, I am doing a giveaway. I think what I'll do is probably run it through this next week, maybe coin flip next week. Rate and review us, screenshot it. And if you're not a member, DM me on Twitter. If you are a member, DM me in the GC Warrior Room. Or if, if you want to do Twitter, either one. Um, if you don't get in the Warrior Room, uh, DM me that. And then I will be giving away Millie tickets for next week. So the more reviews that I get sent, the more tickets I'll give away. Uh, and you'll be thrown into that drawing. Uh, that goes a long way. Appreciate that. Like and subscribe on YouTube to us. And tell me your favorite quarterback under $5,500 this week. We'll get into that for the reason. Um, uh, tell me your favorite quarterback under $5,500. Right now on Underdog, you can deposit up to $100, get a free $100 match. Use the code GUP. The, dis- the link is in the description. They got daily pick for virtually every single sport. Uh, NFL best ball is back in May. You can use, you can mix and match all these sports and get up to a 20 X parlay. Uh, it's pretty nice. Cause with our content, you should be able to go in there and get some nice parlays uh, between UFC, NASCAR, golf, NFL, college football, uh, NBA. Uh, so you can go get used to the app now, build up your bankroll. So you have some nice little cushion when, when the best ball start rolling out in May uh, and we'll have you covered for that as well. So my notes on this, we got an 11-game main slate, three double-digit spreads this week. Could be four. I, I actually think, especially you get that Sunday night, everybody um, double up on their losses. I could see the Rams getting steamed up to 10 um, with, without 
Henry, it's currently eight, so potentially mm-hmm. there. Be- Be- <clears throat> Bills on the road are, is the only double-digit favorite, minus 14 at the Jaguars. I don't know if that's enough. And then we have four road favorites on the week. Very interesting slate. We were talking about a little bit on, and you just informed me of something because I literally, my note says, was hoping Tywad would return, and this could be the sneaky game like last week's Colts game. Uh, I had read there was no chance of him coming out, and you said just a few minutes ago it looks like he will start. Yeah, he's he's active. So that throws another quarterback in here. It was five thousand dollars on DraftKings. I mean, we're gonna have to because we'll talk through that one when we get to that game. Yeah, there's a lot of them. There's gonna be a lot of um, interesting ways to build. The good thing is, the more that we get here, you're not gonna wind up having too much chalk. And then what you what you will have is the ability if you want. We just talked about last week. It's getting harder and harder to pay up for quarterbacks. Um, the way these slates are rolling out. And now it's probably going to be unique this week, depending on how everything rolls out. Uh, so you may get some ownership discount on a Mahomes or a Josh Allen, Lamar, Dak if he plays, uh, Kyler if he plays. Um, so we'll get to that here in a little bit. Let's kick it off. Packers, Chiefs, I got your article pulled up. I got my notes and my rankings. Uh, we know Rodgers is out. Jordan Love gets his first start at 4,400. Chiefs still don't look like they're clicking. Uh, Tough home win against the Giants. Does it change this week? I mean, we didn't really talk about it last week because it's a Monday night game, but where are you at on the Chiefs, and then how are you handling um, Jordan Love? I kind of like the Chiefs here uh, because the Packers do give up some pretty, you know, good drives and and scoring. So, like, uh, the Chiefs, I think if there's any time they can kind of click it back together, it would be here. A little bit of pressure's off now with Rodgers not coming to town. So I just think there might be a little more of a comfort level here um, at home. And with Jordan Love at quarterback, I mean, they might be put in some pretty good field positions that might not have normally happened when Rodgers was leading, you know, the Packers offense down the field. <clears throat> I just think uh, Tyreek Hill's cheap at 7,900. Same with Kelsey at 7,000. So it's just, it's hard to, you know, it's been hard to play them both at the same time this year, like, like last week, you know, and more times – you know, more often than not this year, he's been targeting Tyreek Hill more than Kelsey. I don't know what that is, just something different in the offense, or if Kel- Kelsey's not 100% and they're just not telling us that. Um, but it seems like, you know, Hill's having no problem getting open, and every time I see Kelsey, it's like, uh, you know, sometimes it's been a bad throw from Mahomes, but he's pretty much got guys draped all over him. So, you know, we'll see how that plays out. But 7,000, I think, is still fair for Kelsey. Um, and then I'm curious to see what you think about Jordan Love. I'm not a big fan. I think he's pretty bad. Uh, it's kind of disappointing. I was looking forward to like, you know, MVS coming back at 3,700 and things like that. And this game kind of shooting out, but I don't know if that's the case here. Well, originally when I was making my, this is obviously the first game I broke down. It was, you know, my note said, we'll love be chalk. Um, this was probably midday yesterday. Now that's changed because there's going to be plenty of options. Um, I don't hate it because I don't respect the chief's secondary that much. Um, I'm interested to see, you know, we're so used to Rodgers zoning in on Adams. Um, and I'm interested to see, you know, will Love spread it out a little more? Does it bring in that secondary type wide receiver? As you said, MVS could be coming back, should be coming back too. Um, Lazard, I would assume, would come back with Adams. Cobb is still there. Now, I think Cobb probably takes a little bit of a hit because I think Rodgers always wanted to make him look um, va- valuable. Um, I also think the Packers probably will try to run the ball, right? Keep, keep, the Chiefs off yeah. the field, and they should be able to run the ball on the Chiefs. So I, but at forty four hundred, normally I would say I don't know how you don't think about it because the Chiefs secondary and all that. But as we'll get to, we're going to have plenty of options for you to go to if you don't like him. I liked him coming out of college more than others <clears throat> from a, you know film standpoint and all that. I would love for him to blow up this game because I have some very nice um, graded rookie cards that uh, I would love to see them spike. Um, you know, so, but because of the slate, I don't know how much I'll like it. I I really, and this Sunday morning is probably going to be as as crucial as any is waiting to see where people seem to filter on on these chalky, cheaper quarterbacks. Um, I think he may get some love because no, no pun intended because higher scoring game chief secondary. So it may be, it may be a a good pivot and you, what may be a good idea is going chiefs and run it back with Aaron Jones and play, you know, the script that the Packers are going to try to run the ball, control the clock, something like that. The problem with that is when you start going Mahomes-Hill or Mahomes-Kell, I don't think you can do all three on a slate like this. 
because of all the value at quarterback, everybody's going to be paying up at spots. So you really need to balance that a little bit. Obviously, next 48 hours is going to be crucial on figuring all that out. Um, so I kind of agree with you there. I, I don't I, I don't know as big on Daryl Williams. Um, you know, Gore looked good. That was kind of a surprise Monday night. Um, do you think he, he has a less role or it just was a one-off deal? Um. Yeah, I think I think Daryl Williams is still the one A there. Maybe Gore mixes in a little bit more. I like Daryl Williams more when I thought he'd catch some more passes. You know, if Rodgers could have kept this game close or even <clears> upset the Chiefs, <clears throat> or I think when the Lions came out, he was a one point favorite even in KC, right. if I remember right. Mm -hmm. So that's when I liked Williams more. Now I'd probably you know I have to update this. I'll probably you know take him out of even the the tournament play here. I mean, I guess when they get near the goal line, the Gore scored last week. I don't think they were within the the five yard line though, if I remember right. Yep. Uh, so I don't know who their goal line back would be, but there is that that threat there that Gore could take one. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'd just avoid the backfield altogether. And then when Rodgers was playing, Aaron Jones was actually one of my favorite. You know, when I looked initially, he was probably one of my favorite running back plays on the slate at seventy two hundred. Um, and with love, I mean, I guess it's unknown. I don't know if he'll dump down to Jones a lot. So maybe he does get a few more receptions or just, you know, stay in line with what he's been doing with Rogers, which is, you know, quite a bit of a high PPR floor there. Um, but yeah, I, I totally agree with what you said. I, I love Jones here. So we'll see. I can't put him in cash because there's other better values there, but I'd love to play him in a tournament. Yeah, I agree with all that. Um, Chargers, Eagles, we got Eagle, Chargers 25.5. At the Eagles, 24.1, a slight road favorite. Um, I kind of agree with most of what you said. We, we've talked about how what what week is hurt is going to hurt us, no pun intended. Um, and, and last week kind of was that bust week. What's crazy, I was talking to my cousin that night. We were It was Halloween, so we were taking the kids around the neighborhood and all that. And I was like, if, you look, if you'd have told me the Chiefs are going to win 44 to whatever, I would have thought it had been – it's like the exact opposite of the whole season. Like they've had bad games and he's done well. And then they blow him out, and he doesn't have anything. I was like, it, it was a weird game. Um, I'm not off of him, and I don't think you are as well. I kind of – I mean, we'll see how the rest of the slate breaks out. I kind of don't mind like a little eagle stack and running it back with Eckler. Um, where, where are you at on this game? I was a little surprised you didn't have Herbert here, but um, there's going to be so much value at quarterback that I kind of get it. Yeah, that's kind of why Herbert – fell off here. I mean, maybe just saying that out loud, that makes him kind of a sneaky play for the MME or something. But um, I like Eckler so much here. But, I mean, Eckler and Herbert can eat together. But I just like Eckler. He's probably my favorite play in the whole game. Uh, and then if you're going to do Hurts or something like that, you know, I like Goddard. But I also don't mind just plucking, you know, one piece from either side, like an Eckler-Goddard start, and then just build, you know, your other stacks from there, however you wanted to build your lineup. But uh, it's a good, good spot for Eckler. He's – not normally like a guy that I would look for in cash just because, I mean, even though he's had a solid season, he's kind of like fluctuated up and down usage wise, but I, I like him this week. It's a great matchup against the Eagles. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go away from him here. Yeah. I was a full fade of him last week. I don't know if I get there this week. I, I may, you know, a, a come somewhat of a good bounce back spot. Um, Eagles can get pressure up front. I think if Eckler hits, it's going to be more in the passing, getting the, the receptions and stuff like that, then, you know, some goal line touchdowns would also help. I don't hate Devontae Smith. He's one guy I didn't see you had mentioned, you know, boomer bust type deal, um, you know, fairly cheap. If you're going Hurts, I don't think I'd one off Devontae, but if you're going Hurts and maybe you want to try to avoid the Hurts Goddard chalk, if you're doing that, you can do all three, but uh, I don't know if we want three Eagles here. Now, I mean, if, if it runs out like Vegas thinks, and it is a competitive close game, um, they are at Philadelphia then, yeah, I, I like getting some pieces of this game and, uh, you know, hope the, the TD variance comes our way. The pace is high, too. Like, I noticed that each team is running inside the top five neutral pace. So that's the fastest we've seen all year, I think, two teams combined playing each other. So if that does stay true and these guys are just going on, just running plays nonstop, then all the play volumes escalated in this game as well. This could be this could be great. That's one reason I didn't like the Chargers last week was, was I knew the Patriots, I knew Belichick was going to try to scheme around that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and he did. And so you're right. Yeah. I mean, they're going to try to keep it up tempo here. Um, wouldn't even hate if the Chargers get out to a little bit of a lead, you know, forcing the Eagle to, Eagles to, to keep it going. Next up, we got Vikings at Ravens, 27 and a half, 22. Vikings lay an egg last week. Um, a lot of interesting pieces here. I think we're both in agreement on Lamar. It's going to come into, you know, 
I hope it takes a lot of focus off him with so many options. I don't mind a naked Lamar at all. You obviously know my love for Bateman, and at 4,000, I'll keep playing him. He's going to have a bust-out game at some point this season. Um, this could be it for sure. Uh, my only worry is I, I don't know how much faith I have in the Vikings right now. That, you know, bad loss last week. Now they're on the road. Um, their season's, you know, hanging by a thread. Now that could motivate them. You know, this could be the – you know, make or break game. But if Ravens get up quick and early, th then the, you know, it may just be a neck of Lamar game because he may not be throwing that much. And, but he's going to run because, you know, we got, you know, question marks still with uh, Murray and the others just aren't getting it done per se. Um, and Cook has just killed me all year. Season long, DFS, I don't like him. Talk me into him. I know you kind of got him written up here. Um, he just keeps killing me. So I, I don't have faith. Maybe this is the bounce back game. Initially, I was off him, and then I read, you know, my own article and was like, "No, you know, I'm saying, I'm saying reasons to play him, not reasons to not play him." So, like, I just think, like you said, you know, you want to bounce back. They're gonna put the ball in the hands of the guy who is there. In my mind, that's like the bread and butter of that offense is just you pound Dalvin Cook. It was, I think, a pretty shitty matchup on paper when they went and played the Panthers on the road. If you just looked at matchups. I think I was off Cook that games. I'm like, no, nah, it's like a better matchup through the air. But then they give him 30 carries. He has 140 yards, and they win the game. It's like that's just – I just have that feeling here that they're going to do that. And I really like the Ravens here. Like, Lamar is my favorite quarterback on the slates, not even close. And I love Brown here. He's playing a couple slow corners that he can just roast all day. Uh, they just lost uh, Danielle Hunter. He has another pass rusher that's gone for the Vikings. So I just freaking – I love Lamar here. Um, and, you know, like you said, Bateman's only 4000 Andrew's 5500 Those are all very fair prices. And Marquise Brown, too, 6000 That's extremely fair as well. So I kind of like the uh, playing Cook and then running it back with Lamar and one of his targets. Yeah, I know. Game stacking in this environment would be ideal. Um, you know, if you run the uh, game script of Ravens dominate, you know, maybe you do Lamar with some of those options and run it back with like Jefferson and hope that they're just having to throw like crazy in the second half. I don't hate Cook either for the reasons you said. I mean, if they utilize him, he's going to do okay. We've seen that. It was just, you know, frustrating, you know, when it's, he just lays the eggs like he does. Uh, maybe he's still getting healthy and, and this week is a good bounce back. 7,700 seems like a, a, a lot to eat. I'm not sure if I get there yet. Uh, but I could see this game as a good under the radar you know, ownership wise game stacking, you know, I don't, what do I got it? My ownership, I didn't talk about ownership to start with because all that's kind of went out the window in the last few hours with some of this stuff. It's going to change a lot, but you know, this game was a, a fairly even ownership, probably top four or five, um, but not any of the chalky ones where the bills will get to the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Chiefs Packers will still probably be pretty decently owned. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't hate that at all. It's a good, it's a good idea. And I, I think, I think Cook. What do I have Cook at now? I think Cook won't be very high owned. He just continue to lay eggs, especially in this price range. You got so many other. Yeah, options. probably not here. And my other hope too is that if they do get behind, because I do really like the Ravens here, is that maybe they'll start using him a little more in the pass game, Passing so that game. would help raise his floor and ceiling. But you know, no, if they will, I just I would like to think like he he was involved a lot last year, and then. <clears throat> Uh, to start this year, and then it just died. So I don't know if it's because he got hurt, but they're right. not really easing him back in. They're just not – I don't know, it's not clicking. But I, I just have a feeling about him here, more of a gut feel, but I, I do like Cook. Broncos at Cowboys, 19.75 to 29.75. Cowboys now a 10-point home favorite. Line implies that Dalvin – or uh, Dak Prescott will start and play. Um <clears throat> CD Lamb got hurt in practice yesterday, a new injury. Keep an eye on that. Um, it doesn't sound like Gallup, they wanted to rush Gallup back originally, but if CD winds up being out, maybe they push Gallup. If not, I think we could get some wide receiver value here with Wilson and or Noah Brown. Um, Cooper's questionable as well. Um, he's probably going to be questionable for the rest of his career. So I don't pay a whole much into that, but um, – could be a good game to get into just, you know, if you wind up getting to play Dak 6,900 uh, with all the value on the slate, you probably won't be tied on. Most people probably say, well, <clears throat> and it could be right. Dallas is going to try to run the ball. They don't want to risk Dak, um, get a lead, run Pollard and Zeke. And I can certainly see that. And I don't see the Broncos offense doing much and neither does Vegas. 
Um, but you could get, you know, just pick one of them. You go Dak, uh, Zeke, you know, maybe a Noah Brown or a Wilson, a mini stack. And I like Judy running it back. I think we both like him still as upside. Where, where are you at on all the Cowboys stuff? And obviously I love CD if he – but um, this isn't a game where they will push anybody that's on the fringe hurting because I think they can win multiple ways. Um, so, you know, we'll keep an eye on that. That injury just happened late yesterday. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the same way as you here. Mm. We're like, I think that – so Ezekiel Elliott – on paper is probably my favorite running back play of the week. Uh, I just think the same things that you said, like Dak coming off an injury, the receivers a little hobbled, banged up. And then you just have an awesome matchup here where like Dallas's offensive line is just number one in like offensive adjusted line yards, which we know they can run block. Um, and then Denver's defensive line, not doing well. Von Miller's gone for good. They're 27th in run DDVOA. And then the other thing about Elliot I loved is that he scored in the five touchdowns in the first five games. He hasn't scored in two straight games. That's not going to continue. Like he will, he will score touchdowns again. And this is a great spot to do it. Big home favorites. Awesome matchup. I freaking love Zeke here. Um, and then if you notice too, I had Zeke for cash and I have all those passing options that you named, you know, as a tournament. And I'd even run Jerry Judy. He's only 5K. I like that coming back, even as a cash piece, if you had to, you know, pay down a wide receiver or something. Um, and then if Fant is out, uh, we'll just call him Albert Oaks. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. He's only $2,600. So that's a great spot. He's been active even when Fant's playing. You know, they run the two T sets. So uh, without Fant, I imagine he steps right into that role and, and does well. Yeah, and if, if we're scripted the other way, like we talked about, it's just a, a Dallas domination. Um, in an MME player pool, I wouldn't be afraid to throw some $4,700 Pollard in there just because, you know, he could hit that. You know, if, they, if they're just up, say, 13, 17, you know, mid their quarter, um, first of all, they're going to try – they're going to get – if they get up big, they're going to rest Zeke at some point. But hopefully if they're up big, he's gotten his – um, you know, their biggest deal right now is, is, is to get to December and January healthy um, with Dak, Zeke, Lamb now that he's hurt. Cooper's banged up. Um, so, running Pollard, he can catch. We've seen his upside. He can bust one. You know, MME pull, 4700 bucks. You could do worse for me there. I don't think many people will go there because there's so much value on this slate. You really don't need to pay down, but um, that's something to keep an eye on. I definitely – everything you, you said, I agree. I didn't even think about the tight end. I didn't realize that Fant was kind of questionable, so that's a good call. I think it was COVID, um, if I remember oh, right. So, okay. mm -hmm. but he's—I think he's vaccinated, so he can—he can, he can get negatives. the two tests by Sunday if they do it in time. So it's something that we'll have to watch right up until Sunday. Sunday morning, yeah. Sunday morning is going to be a big morning to be around. Uh, yeah. Bills at Jaguars, uh, thirty-one and a half, fourteen and a half point road favorite. Jags seventeen implied team total. Um, <clears throat> not much for me to say in this game. The only thing I said. You know, Bills get up big. Jags are at home, so they're not. It's going to be good weather per se. You're not having to go on the road and just you know tuck your tail when you're getting beat. Um, maybe some junk wide receiver late points. Um, you could pick one in an MME format uh, for Jags. Outside of that, I, I kind of agree with everything you say. I, I don't really necessarily disagree with uh, maybe doing a Josh Allen naked. I don't. I don't know how many people are going to pay. This will be the inter one of the interesting ones because as of this morning, I had him projected as a highest owned quarterback. You know, but because it's the best smash spot. He continues to, you know, provide every week. People trust it. 8200 bucks this week paying up for him. Uh, maybe takes a little bit of ownership off of him, but he's one that I think will hold most or some of his ownership just because of the who they're playing and what they'll – I mean, if they smash, he's going to be involved one way or the other. There's not many op many routes for him not to be a part of the smash. So where are you at on this in general? Is there anybody from the Jags at all um, that catches your eye? This week there wasn't. I, I liked Agnew last week. I thought at 3700 that was a pretty fair price for, like you said, just getting those garbage catches. And then he actually fell into the end zone last week. So that was good for anyone that played him. Um, this week, I mean, it's, all the prices are <clears throat> all the price are up, but his price is up to where I don't think we need to, like you said, with all the value this week. And then for the Bills, it's just they're all just tournament plays. I mean, Allen can go off with any one of these guys. You just got to – pick the right one and it's like you can't even really break it down to see because we've tried that before and it's just like he'll just go to someone else so whoever's open you know he's gonna find him and alan always like you said he can play him naked he always has that 
you know, upside to run a TD or two in if they get down near the goal line quite a bit and, you know, he decides to call his own number. So it's just all yeah. tournament for me. Yeah, and I agree with that. I don't see much good value in cash here. Um, Browns at Bengals, 22.25. Browns at Bengals, 24.75. This game historically always scores high, uh, even when the Bengals are terrible. I always kind of remember, you know, for years betting the over in this game. I don't know why. It just seems to have a high total. Um, I kind of like the over in this game again. Um, everything you said, I kind of I, I agree with. I do want – I'm interested to see how Baker and the Browns um, – I think it could be a show me game for Baker without the whole OBJ stuff. And um, one guy I love that looks like he could play. And if he does, I, I just absolutely love him is Donathan Peoples Jones. I think he could have a breakout game and, and then kind of, you know, almost take over what OBJ was supposed to be. Very, very talented uh, guy. Been banged up, been behind guys, couldn't get on the field. If he does play, I could also see Baker want to make it a point to make him look good to say, here's the guy that replaced OBJ. And, you know, we got a happy locker room. We just beat the Bengals on the road. Or even if it's a shootout type deal. I mean, this game could have shootout all over. And I, I like both sides of it. I like game stacking. I like, you know, side stacking and all that. Um, but everything else, you know, you said Higgins, Landry, Chase continues to, to smash. Um, Chubb is okay with me. Mixon, um, per se, you know, I, I don't even know if you had to get the running backs or not, but I, I do kind of like that. I don't know if I go to Baker per se, but I like, I like if you do a bingo stack and run it back with people's Jones, um, you know, maybe Chubb. I like that a lot. Yeah. I like, um, I like the pass game of the Bengals much more than their run game here for reasons. Like you said, like if they're going to score uh, the way to beat the Browns, Browns have pretty much a funnel D where they just shot, stop the run, let you pass on them. Um, but they're kind of like a bend, but don't break D. Uh, I think that Burrow's got enough weapons where they're going to score here. Uh, and I like Higgins, too. His price just won't go up. He keeps seeing <clears> great <throat> usage. Uh, Jamar Chase, too, what I love seeing is they get down near the goal line and they're throwing these, you know, little outs to him and stuff. It's like it's like plays that Rodgers and Devontae Adams run and things. Like, they're, they're now scheming up plays for Chase to score when they're down there. That's huge. Uh, but they also do that with Higgins, and Higgins is only 5,300 compared to Chase being 7,600. So it's a nice, nice way to save some cash there. And then Landry does well uh, when he's the clear number one in the offense too. He's only 5,100. So I think he's uh, even questionable now. He missed practice today or yesterday, but he, um, I think he does that throughout the week, like a Wednesday maintenance day. So I'll check back in on that. Uh, I like Higgins and Landry for cash, and then just like you know, like you said, stack the game in a tournament however you see fit. I do like Burrow. Um, Bengals have been throwing, you know, pretty consistently here now to the point where even last week against the Jets, you know, they're averaging not even three yards per carry. So I just think they're focusing on the pass game a little more now. So that's that's why I'm kind of off mixing. Yeah, he can get involved in the pass game. But now that he's gotten even more weapons, um, it does make mixing, you know, a little more touchdown, you know, dependent. Plus, he, he has to be involved in that pass game this week against the Browns D or, or he just won't return the value. Um Raiders at Giants, 24.75. Giants, 21.75. Raiders, a three-point road favorite. Um, I like them a lot. Obviously, we know the tragic news coming out on, uh, you know, Henry Ruggs. Um, gained a, I already like Carr, but, man, gained a ton of respect with his uh, way that he answered and approached that situation yesterday. If you hadn't seen that video, I retweeted it. You can go check it out. A um, lot of respect for that guy. Um you know, you could worry about some, in, you know, internal, you know, let down type deal, you know, with them being a little, you know, just, you know, distracted if you, if you want to say that. Um, I love the Raiders minus three. You know, obviously it was one of my early look at headlines. I loved Monday before all the stuff happened. Still don't hate it. Um, not rugs doesn't factor into the line with me at all. It's more of just the whole issues and chemistry and stuff like that. I think it may be kind of good that they are going on the road. So you get out of there. Go focus on football for a day. Um, I don't really like this game. As a, I'm similar to you. I, I, I like the game from a betting standpoint. Um, very little options. I, I would say I, I still don't mind Tony if he winds up being healthy and playing. I, I, I didn't see him on your deal, but um, he can bust, you know, any play at any time. Um, played last week, was looking good. Then get a look at he hurt his wrist or hand or something. From one of the things I read this morning, it looks like he, they expect him to play, and he's still practicing to an extent. 
Yeah, I'm the same way. Like, I didn't do any Giants on here because I you got to like wait till Sunday on freaking all of them. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. um, and then the Raiders too. I mean, the, the only person that I left off that felt kind of bad leaving off here was Jacobs, not for cash, but just for a tournament type play. Uh, I might add him on, but I like Renfro. I mean, he's already in a solid role. Uh, there wasn't like you know a hell of a lot of targets going Rugs way, but still some. So if if there are a few more to go around, you know, I think. He's not going to throw it to Zay Jones or like someone like that. It's going to be, you know, maybe just pump a few more to Renfro or Waller. Um, <laughs> Waller was another one I was, you know, thinking of here. Uh, again, just for tournament, not for cash, but uh, that's about it. Brian Edwards is 4,100 too. So if he's going to get involved more, seems like he is anyways lately, but if he's going to get involved even more now, then, then maybe that there. I think, uh, this, again, this is not a great game, but if you're going to pluck a piece out here and there for value, Renfro would be the only one I would consider in cash, and beyond that, that's it. Yeah, Edwards was – he's such a good player in college. Um, I expect him to get going. Maybe we'll start to see it more and more even now. Um, Waller and, and Kelsey all together, I mean, they just – you know, their their floors used to be so much better, and now they've gotten to the point where, you know, they're – you know, sometimes they can drop a you know an egg, and when you're paying that tight end, 6,200, 7,000, it, it's hard to swallow sometimes. Like that. But there's also the, you know, FOMO of – you know, they can, you know, bust a slate open um, yeah. at any time. So I kind of agree with that. Don't see it for cash either. Um, Cardinals at 49ers, 24.5 at uh, 49ers, 22. This really is going to come down to, to uh, Murray. Um, you know, I, you know, I think this game in general and a little bit of the slate hinges on is Murray going to play or not. It's a big, you know, divisional game. Cardinals need to get the win. They're on the road. I think. You know, just knowing Murray from what I know about him, um, you know, a little bit more. I, I, I think he'll push to play if he can play. Um, he's a gamer. You know, I, I don't really know if he cares about practice as much as some, but, you know, he loves to play the games. Having said that, they, were, they, they, need, they have a really good team. And, you know, coming off the loss, uh, you know, last minute, second loss, they need to, you know, think long term. That's probably what they'll push for is, you know, Let's go try to win this game with Colt um, if he's banged up. That's really going to come down to it. If Colt plays, who do you think is going to be higher owned between McCoy and Love? I think Love would be higher owned. Just in that that game, you know, it's going to have a higher total, and he's he'll be way more talked up than McCoy here. I, I just which kind of makes me like McCoy. I mean, he's only four thousand, and where you beat the Niners is through their their terrible secondary. So it's that'd be the way to do it. Um, they don't really run the ball as it is. So I can't see him just changing the offense altogether just to hand the ball off all the time with Colt McCoy on the road. Uh, just not going to happen. So he'll throw the ball. Receivers will be open, and he's just got to get him the ball. That's it. 4000 is just it, so cheap. It's very rare nowadays that we actually get a bare minimum price quarterback. So normally yeah, they he, would uh, – like Kyler was questionable already. I'm surprised sure. they didn't bump him up 500 bucks. Well, when did that game – was that the Sunday night game? Or was it? Oh, maybe it was. Yeah. Yeah, they it may have. They may have pushed pricing. I already had their algorithm going when he got he got hurt on the very last play of the game. Um, yeah. But I agree. I think if Colt starts, I do like Chase Edmonds because I think a lot of dump off passes. You know, he's not going to be mobile like Kyler is. Kyler can move around the pocket. The O line's better, but it's still not a great one. I think Kyler makes it look better than what it is at times. And, you know, I can see – and Edmonds are pass catching back. So, 5,300, mm-hmm. uh, I do like him if Colt is named the starter. If not, you know, Chase is probably just my normal – you know, I, I like him like I normally do. But I like him more if, if Colt starts. Um, Debo's hard, man. I just I, – I, I try to fade him, and he just – he always seems to – you know, similar to Chase, but his is – he catches like a three-yard pass and makes Jimmy G look like an All-American. Um, yeah. You know, so Hopkins is a big deal for me on on McCoy as well. If McCoy McCoy starts and Hopkins looks healthy, um, I think that helps him because you know he's got a little bit of a security blanket can can pass it around. It's hard to trust Hopkins w- with the hammy. We saw it last game. You know, you wind up getting pulled up. It was nice to see him go back in the game later on. Um, do, do you trust Hopkins? And where are you at on on Debo? I actually liked Hopkins more too if McCoy's out there. I just think it's like more of a first read type quarterback. Like you yeah. said, where Kyler can make plays, roll out, things like that, scramble a little. You know, he starts going through different progressions or people are just at that play, it's a broken play and people are getting open. Right. Cole McCoy's gonna be, you know, get the ball, watch the first read, and a lot of times the ball's just gonna go there. 
or check so down. That's right. me. So, yeah. yeah, that's Hopkins. Yeah, so I, I mean, if if it's cold, I love a Colt Chase Edmond Hopkins stack because yeah, it's going to be first read or check down. Maybe um um Ertz. Yeah, you know, I didn't in. even think of him too. So I was too. <clears throat> So Kittle's back too. So I do, I guess I like both tight ends in this game. Cause that's another, you know, could be a nice safety security blanket for McCoy. Um, and then Kittle too, like he, he plays well against the Cardinals. So um, I don't mind that at all. Uh, and he'll be coming back off the injury. He should be lower owned and he's only 5,200. Week nine NFL. I wanted to see the only negative will be, uh, which could be good if you want to risk it. Yeah, so they're a 325 game. I, 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 if you're wanting Colt, you want to hope that they name that. <laughs> um, like it's by like Friday or Saturday. They they are on the road, so there's a chance that they just say he's inactive and he doesn't travel with the team. You know, I, I don't know. That's something to watch. The good thing is, is Jordan Love is also 325, so you have room to pivot. Um, if we have an unknown on Kyler – I would probably make sure any um, Colt lineup has that. Would it be four hundred bucks? Yeah, he's Did, what? It's, well, love forty six or forty four? I think he's forty four. I think he's forty four. Yeah, so I, I would make yeah. sure, and we'll talk about that Sunday morning. That if we don't know on Kyler, you know, and you're going to go that route, you know, make sure or build all your lineups with love, so you naturally already have the. You can go down if Colt's activated, then move up somewhere else. Um, but if you really like Colt, you go with him and make sure every lineup has that 400 bucks because he's the only guy you can move up to in that time frame um, if, if you're doing a late swap. So that'll be something to keep an eye on Sunday morning. I kind of like that. It, yeah. it may even favor people, you know, they're on the ball. But a lot of people don't late swap. And so if, if Murray's questionable, I think if Murray's questionable and then gets ruled um, out after lock on, on Sunday at noon – I think Colt is, is really low owned because most people don't want to, um, you know, risk it. And then all, all, and also they just won't late swap. People just build with love. And maybe if they're in a bind, they'll drop 400 bucks and try to pay up. But I still think he'd be very low owned at that, at that point in time, as opposed to if it comes out Saturday night, Kyler Murray's out. Well, then now I think Colt and, and Love will share some ownership for sure. Um, so the we'll other thing I saw too is uh, AJ Green uh, is COVID as well. Uh, so I think he's more well, likely I'd, out than, than not. Well, I would make a big boost to uh, my boy Rondell Moore then if he's out. Yeah, um, Moore's 4,200. And then, like you said, Ertz, I didn't even think of that. 4,700, that's a great one. Yeah, see, that, that's an option where you start stacking the, the Cardinals and then, then you go get your one-off piece. I'd probably run it back with Debo. He's just that good. And then, you know, you can go get a, a Kelsey or a, or a Hill. It's a one-off piece, but not many people are going to be doing that. So getting that chalk – um, high up, paying high up, doesn't matter. You know, maybe Kamara. We're about to get to that, you know, here in a second. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Texans at Dolphins. Three games left. As we go down the slate, you'll see we talk less and less. That's how we do it. Um, Texans 19.5 at Dolphins 26. As my note stated originally, was hoping Ty would return, so this could be the sneaky stat game. Um, I had him as out. You say he's now fully active and go. So I love this game in the sense of, you know, think Colts last week. Um, I was a little disappointed in my DFS last week. It was a good week, um, but for having so much right, you know, I had the, the Pittman-Wentz combo. I had Taylor in plenty of places. It seemed like every smash lineup had that one piece here or there that just was a, a you know, a snowflake that cost me a lot of money. Uh, you see the Millie Maker lineup had the Colts kind of deal in there. So it, it's frustrating when you see when you, you're so close to being right and you're right on a lot, but you won off. But that's NFL DFS in, in a, you know, in a nutshell. I think this could be that same deal. I think Tyrod would give him a boost. He's cheap as well. So he's another guy that people can pay down and save money. It obviously, you know, boosts Cooks, but he was already, you know, last week he pays off late for the chalk. Everybody, you know, stacked him back against the Rams and, Really wouldn't do much. Then he gets that last big touchdown and kind of pays that off. Um, where you at on this game now that Tyrod is in? You got to think Tua and Parker and Waddle and Gasecki could all still have good games. Um, you know, do you just like Tyrod and Cooks, or is there any other pieces you think you bring in with Tyrod being a little bit of an upgrade? With Tyrod being an upgrade, I didn't have him originally listed here, but I don't mind Nico Collins too. Uh, Nico Collins only thirty six hundred, 
So another way to kind of go real cheap and, um, you know, I don't know really what his upside is going to be. I, I would think it's probably something like, you know, five, six catches, and then you hope that he gets in the end zone, and that's where he can really smash for that price. Uh, and I, I just love the Dolphin side of the ball too. So, you know, you have Tyrod Cooks and I'd say Nico Collins on the one side. And then uh, the other thing I liked about Collins too, and I don't know if they're going to do this or not, um, I think he played mostly on the outside. So maybe uh, even look at Amendola for 3,200. Uh, I just think Tyrod's a better quarterback and can find more guys in the slot. But the two the two outside guys on Miami aren't bad. Um, so maybe look at Amendola. I got to look more into that. But I think Amendola's running like 90% out of the slot. Uh, and I love the Dolphins side. I love Tua again. Tua's thrown like 40 straight times or 40 times in three straight games. Uh, they're just letting him eat. And then you got Parker, 5,300. Um, he doesn't have less than seven targets in any game he's played this year. That's too cheap for for his usage. Um, and then you know Waddle's still 5600. Kasiki's 4900. Like you said, this game's just awesome. I, I wish Gaskin would get the lead role because this is such an awesome spot for him. But um, Ed's playing, Laird's playing. They signed Duke Johnson. It's like they yeah. just won't let him. They just won't let him eat. But if he gets 20 carries or not even carries, just 20 touches out of nowhere, Gaskin can crush here. I agree. You know, I think this could be a game. We'll, we'll see how the ownership trends uh, over the next 48 hours. But I, I like that a lot this week. Falcons at Saints. Falcons 18, Saints 24. Um, we know Winston went out last week. Saints get a big win against the Bucks. They continue to own Brady uh, more than any other team uh, while he's been at Tampa Bay. Falcons, I, I try to believe in them, and they continue to let me down. Ridley's out now for who knows how long. Um I would have thought that boosted Patterson a little bit last week. Um, you know, I, and that was one deal. I put, I put, I had no, I, I didn't have any gauge at all. And I went and started putting gauge in a couple things like a donkey and, you know, didn't get anything. You know, Taze Sharp kind of has the bigger game. I'm not as big on Atlanta this side. If anything, um, I agree with you on Patterson, maybe Sharp. Um, looks like Hill's going to play if he does. Do you still like Kamara? Does he hurt Kamara? He's, he's the other guy, so that's why I did the pod. Or the, Tell me the quarterback, 5,500 or less. You got about five of them at least starting this today. Um, and now Michael Thomas is out for the season. So they're, they're now knowing who their team's going to be, and they need to build for the playoffs. So you're going to start seeing them work on what they want to achieve and then rely on that defense who's playing pretty good right now. Yeah, when this, so when I first looked at the slate at the beginning of the week, and saw Taysom might come back, was 5,500 at home against the Falcons. He was my favorite quarterback play by far. Then you start getting all this value, and then I start digging more into Lamar, and now it's like, I don't know, maybe it's good that Taysom would be a lot lower owned here because uh, he would have just been chalk if all these things didn't pop up. I love him if he starts, especially in this matchup. The Falcons' defense is just really bad. I mean, they're – 30th in defensive drive success or 25th in run DDVOA, 31st in pass DDVOA, or, um, or 29th in pass DDVOA. They're 31st in adjusted sack rate, so they get no – they just don't do anything on defense. They let you score, and that's it. So, I don't know. Now they're on the road. They're almost touchdown dogs. Um, I love Taysom, and I do think it kind of – it can hurt Kamara a little bit. Now you have, you know, a game where you're heavy favorites and you got – Ingram and Hill both there with you. Uh, you know, if you ever get to the goal line, something like that in those situations, they love calling those numbers. So it can take away from him a little bit. Maybe coming back off an injury, you know, Peyton's not going to use him like that. Maybe it takes it a little easier on Hill. Uh, so maybe that helps Kamara a little. Uh, we'll have to see how this plays out. If Semyon starts, and I just, I love Kamara. I think it's a great play. Yeah, that's another one we're going to have to wait to kind of see what that, how that develops going into Sunday. I, I agree on Hill. I think. I do think, um, let's just assume it's Hill, that Kamara, they'll start to, even though Hill can, you know, take away those goal line touchdowns from him, I think because of what they're set up with, with no Michael Thomas and all that, they're going to slowly start morphing into Kamara being even more involved in the pass game because they just don't have any weapons. And so, yeah, Ingram could come in for sure. Um, but I think you could see a lot of two back sets, you know, Kamara flexed out quick passes from Hill. So it hurts him in the touchdown zone. I think it boosts him in the passing game. Do agree with you. If it's Simeon, then I, then I do like Kamara even more. If it's the Simeon, thing about Hill's, 
Do you like any wide receiver sorry, at all? Just, yeah, go ahead. Well, I'm sorry. I was going to say about Hill, too. The thing about his injury that makes me think, like, you know, maybe maybe I'd be a little more hesitant on Hill is that it was a concussion. So, like, in week five, that's a long time ago to have your brain rattled like that to where you can't even play until now. So, mm-hmm. like, maybe they won't be running those, uh, you know, QB draws and whatever else and, you know, all the plays they ran at the goal line where he would just sweep out and just bury his head in there. Maybe that's not going to happen anymore. You know, they might call more designed runs. So yeah, I think I, I'm definitely higher on Camara, obviously than I am on Hill, you know, even with the price difference there, but yeah, I don't know, something to mention. And what were you asking just about the receivers? Yeah. I said, if, if Simeon starts, do you like Callaway or, or, you know, uh, Trey Kwani, anybody? Not, not really there. On the other side, I don't mind Taji Sharp at 4,200. It seems like he's taking over Ridley's role, uh, which Ridley, you know, even him was kind of struggling in that role this year. But he, you know, the difference is Sharp's only 4,200. So if you're just looking to punt something out there and, and hope <laughs> it hits, perhaps it does here. So probably the one thing I, I agree to say, if, if he was the only cheap guy this week, he probably would be pretty – chalky and, and a good go-to because of all the other, other options and we don't know what Peyton's gonna do right um I don't know if he's gonna he's not gonna come out and say this is our plan it could be Simeon takes the Winston role but they just plan on getting Hill involved a little bit more because Winston's not there and Hill winds up being active and on the team but doesn't even get the majority right. I mean so it's, it's a risk unless we get a clear plan from somebody um could be worth taking no doubt um, but right now I'd rather pay down to some of these others and come back and just have Kamara, uh, Kamara as a one-off in a bunch of lineups, uh, personally. Yeah. I think right now just talking through this and then we get the Tyrod news. I'd rather have Tyrod, uh, than Hill. Yep. If I I'm going to pay that. down a quarterback. So next game won't take long. Last game on the slate, Pat's 22 and a half at Panthers, 18 and a half. Probably the biggest news, our only news to look for is does does McCaffrey get activated? Um, looks like he said he was very limited Wednesday's practice. They're at home, so you don't get the whole – you won't get a little bit of an advantage of he traveled with the team or anything. Um, but I think do – you, do you think if he's inactive that Hubbard's still in play or no? <clears throat> no, I don't really like it. And even if McCaffrey's activated uh, and they say he's a full go – I don't even think I'd play him in cash for 8,000, which is kind of crazy because I just don't know how much they will let him go. Uh, they've looked like shit lately. I just think that it's – you're to really put a guy out there who's easily your best player and playmaker and just have any risk at all of him re-aggravating something. Uh, I don't know. So I think Hubbard's still going to be involved a little bit, even if McCaffrey's active in a go. He's always in playing tournaments, though, because he has this thing where – he does get injured. He'll miss games. He comes back, and then all of a sudden he touches the ball 28 to 29 times. It's like they never even, you know, they don't care. So if that happens, obviously, you know, he can break any slate as we've seen over the last few years. But uh, I can't play him in cash this week. Yeah, I mean, they're 4-4. Four and four. Two back of the um, Saints, you know, call it three and a half, two and a half back. Of the, Buc- the Bucks are 6-2, and two, so um, – Right, two back of the Bucks, sorry, and then one and a half from the Saints. They're five and two, but so they got. I mean, they can't just ease off if he comes back. I mean, I, I think my gut says that they make him active. He's in. They're going to utilize him because they need him. They need to win this game. And it's not going to be an easy game to win against Belichick, especially if PJ Walker starts. But even if Darnold yeah. starts, I mean, Belichick just owns rookie, young, inexperienced quarterbacks. Walker's another one that's going to be 5,000. Um, I don't think he's owned at all, even if he starts. He does have rushing upside. Um, you know, but the Patriots, I just assume, will scheme that and, and be perfectly fine. So the only thing I had noted um, before we wrap it up was I still like Jacoby Myers. 68 targets on the year. He continues to catch. He has zero touchdowns on the year. I think people would look at it differently. If Let's say he just had five touchdowns through through these eight games, seven games, whatever it is, four touchdowns. Um, he's not getting the, I don't know. I hadn't watched enough of the, of the tape to see if he's even getting involved in the red zone enough, or it's just been bad luck. Uh, cause he's getting a ton of targets. He had one call back. I, I saw, so I don't know. There was that, that probably pissed him off so bad. Cause he's like, he's on the longest streak, like ever with receptions without a TD. But, um, yeah, I don't know. He's one that I, I even I wrote about him here, just saying he's seeing all the targets. He's just not really doing anything with them. So even though he's seeing eight, nine targets in a game, you know, he's putting up 30, 40 yards. It's just 
I don't know. It, yes, you could. He could obviously hit in a tournament, and he's cheap. But I just think there's so many more options we went through at that price range that I think have a realistic ceiling of scoring a touchdown or two. The Landrys, the Higgins, the the players like that, the Judys, all these guys, I think can can just beat the shit out of them. So I just don't. It's hard for me to plug him in there and feel confident about it, even if I'm trying to like pluck a lower owned piece. It's just to me, it's just not even worth it. I'd rather play those other guys who are who are better and in better situations. No, I agree. Apologize for the coughing uh, to y'all out there. When you have kids in uh, elementary schools, they bring stuff home with them quite frequently. Um, monkey knife fight. I will have my monkey knife fight college football and NFL plays out on the coin flip later on. You can use the code GUPS, G U P S, get $100 match up to $100 bucks, dollar for dollar. Um, UFC, NFL, college football, PGA, hockey, esports, NBA, MLB is all in there. This weekend for the big card, they have UFC Knockout Kings. Uh, pick three fighters from a $5 plus Knockout Kings contest of all three. Win by KR TKO. You win a share of the big jackpot. It does roll over. If not, the jackpot starts out at 5K. So that's a pretty good little deal. I did, uh, obviously, we'll have that fully covered with Tommy and, and uh, the, the GC channel over there is great. Um, he said some few that he's looking at. Uh, you'll have to help me on name. Is it Piaria? A prayer for yeah, UFC? Pra yeah, UFC. Pereira. Yeah, he's... Usman, maybe. He loves Ian Gary is another one that he likes a lot, potentially by KO, TKO. So there's a few. And if you're in the Warrior Room, obviously he'll have his full right up there. You pick three. If they all win by KO, TKO, you get a, a share of that jackpot. If the only one that does it, I mean, you get the whole thing. It's five bucks to get in there. Um, so that's pretty cool. I'm going I'm to do that this weekend. Let's go. I know it's not where you're, it's not, a, they're not up yet in New York, are they? For what? The, monkey oh, monkey no, knife fight. Yeah. No, no, no. We still can't do that. Um, yeah, we can do uh, a couple more things, though. We can get on Prediction Strike. And DK Sportsbook's supposed to be coming here by the Same. end of football is what they said. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I saw the Prediction Strike went up there, uh, and they just released UFC as well. So um, look, looking like a uh, – we'll wrap up football here in just a second. I just want to ask you your thoughts on huge NASCAR weekend, three races, trucks, uh, Xfinity, and then the big one. Uh, I know you already started dropping things. We actually have qualifying – and practice is that is that I'm, I'm a newbie on nascar but um is that yeah we have it for saying? for all three series they're doing practice and qualifying so the championship four won't even start one through four like they've done all playoffs all the playoff drivers start up front those right. will be you practice and then you start where you qualify so that makes it a little interesting it's um, like a, but I yeah, would say a larson a larson has a bad qual and he he starts 19th is he just a smash spot because of the positioning points he can make up? Is that the, I mean, we haven't had that much this year because normally, like you said, they've been starting where, where, where they've been ranked. So it, it'll make for some strategy. And, and obviously you got to be around, you know, in the GC warrior room. Um, it also looks like to me that they're going to have a Millie maker for the, for the Daytona in, in February, all these satellites I'm seeing and they're in multiple sports. I see them in college football contests. I saw it last night. Um, you know, little, you know, get your, it looks like a 20, I think it's a 20 or $25 ticket. Um, so that'd be awesome. I mean, it'd be the first ever million maker for NASCAR, right? Yeah, it'd be big time. So I've already been in satellites earning my tickets. So you will definitely see me in there and I know we'll see you in there. And, uh, I know Jimbo and Slack has already posted. He actually did a little breakdown. So if, if no one's in the NASCAR Slack room, uh, go in there. And one of our members, Jimbo, posted uh, a couple different things about NASCAR satellites and how to win the tickets. But every sport you play now, if you go over to the satellite section on DraftKings, you'll see uh, ways to to get into this this Millie Maker for NASCAR. We'll have a, a huge advantage. We'll have a huge advantage this weekend too, because we'll be dropping everything, you know, after qualifying, heading into the race. So a lot of people are going to have their lineup set, which is just absolutely insane. And right. they're not going to either they forget to edit it or they won't edit it. Uh, in between, you know, qualifying and race time. So we'll have a huge advantage this weekend. I look forward to it, especially in Xfinity Saturday night because that's, that's another quick turnaround there. And I'll be home, you know, I'll be able to put full projections out for every Xfinity driver. So if you're not in Slack, get in there. And I'll post that one right on the site too. So if you're a member, you'll have access to it. Yeah, I think it's a massive weekend for uh, if you're not a member, like I said, hot gets you 20% off, but you get all this for free for seven days. I think between UFC, 
Tommy's our lead man there. Uh, Follow the Money does a great podcast, um, Parlay and Pray, and he has feedback. There's other sharp minds. There's sharp minds in all of our GC Warrior Room channels. Um, I think we'll have a great uh, advantage on the UFC card. And the NASCAR are second to none. Um, like you said, when that Daytona next year will be even even better um, you know, for us, however, even if it's not a million maker, I think it is. I, I personally will. I may reach out to my rep and see if they're planning on doing that just so we know. Um, we are having a ton of updates coming to NASCAR for the 2022 season, so stand by for that information. College football podcast, a must listen to with Bobby the Goat Burger for the main slate comes out tomorrow morning. Be sure to check that out. Coin flip later today or tomorrow morning as well. And then uh, my cup with Gup for Thursday night football as I break down what I think will be a very interesting slate. Um, and some, uh, I think there's going to be some good edges tonight. We'll come out shortly after this one as well. So we will, we got a lot coming out here in the next seven days. Great slates going on. Come join us if you haven't. It's, a, it's probably one of the best times to do it um, as far as slates coming on. It's a massive Massive pots for NASCAR and UFC, um, as big as 200k up top for the UFC. I think it's 20 or 25 dollars, 20 dollar deal, which is you know awesome to see. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Hope you guys have a blessed day and an afternoon, and I'll be back later on uh, with Cup with Cup and then Coin Flip. Thank you guys.